This is our latest project. <clears throat> it's a um, 1940s to 1950s conveyance uh, forklift. Not quite sure exactly of the date as yet. It has a uh, two and a half ton lift capacity. And it has a flathead, flathead engine, which should be an exciting challenge to get that running. So we're going to start working on the restoration of this machine. It was um, in a farm warehouse, barn, for many, many years and uh, hasn't been started since 1985. Uh, I've had it transported to my workshops where we will uh, get stuck in. So I think the first job for us to do today is to remove these side panels, the engine cover top, the front panel, and the side panel here, and then get into it with the degreaser and the pressure washer so we can see what uh, what needs to be done. So let's make a start on that. Looks like the seat the seat must pivot up to allow access to the engine. It's the hydraulic oil, the petrol. And it looks like it's got an oil bar for air cleaner over there. <clears throat> That battery is a uh, evidence that hasn't been started for a long time. It's a rubber, rubber battery. It's a Zenith carburetor. Everything looks to be in order. A lot of mouse droppings in there. Probably a few little, few little <clears throat> visitors living in there. But we'll get all that cleaned out. And we'll take the um, fuel and oil tank out, hydraulic oil tank out, because I think that's leaking. It looks at the oil everywhere. It's definitely an oil, nasty oil leak in there somewhere. And then we will uh, turn the engine over by hand with the crank handle and see if it's going to turn or whether it's locked up. So let's start by removing these plates so we can get access to the mechanic side of it. Let's see how we go. So we're going to start, we've already taken the side covers off, this side and that side, and now we're going to take this top cover off so we can get to the engine and see what's going on. So let's get on with that. Okay, so we've cleaned the machine, got most of the oil and grease off, there's still a lot to come off, I haven't done the tower, but I've got the... Uh, the main part of the body cleaned and into the engine. Now, unfortunately the engine doesn't turn. So it's been sitting for 35 years and the engine is um, locked. I'm hoping it's locked just from sitting and not actually not actually seized. Um, so what we're going to do is take spark plugs out and fill each cylinder with oil. Um, try and loosen the engine up. Let it soak for a couple of days and loosen it up.
Okay, so we've got the engine in the workshop and on the stand. It's got um, aluminium cylinder head. And you see the engine number there. ED744ME, which is the original engine from the fork truck. We've got the hydraulic pump at the front. And big thermostat housing. Sounds like money. So the valve clearance is written on the cover there, which is good. And we're about to drain the oil. This is the bit I've been not really looking forward to because it's going to tell us what's in there, and I'm expecting it to be full of water. We've already taken the clutch out. The clutch came apart fairly easy, really. Different type of clutch housing to what I've, what I've seen before. This must be a flying, flying standard clutch from the 1940s. That's the housing, and then the plate, which is down to the rivets. So you'll see the brass rivets starting to shine there. So there's no point putting that back in the forklift. We'll fit a try and find and fit a new clutch and we'll clean up all these discs they're not scored they're just a little bit rusty so they can go back in all right let's drain the oil see what comes out Yoki. i think with it being a forklift engine and no clearance under here that it is unlikely that the oil gets changed very often because without a hoist it's almost impossible to get to the sun. This is just going to be water, I reckon. Yep, it's water. Oh my god. Oh yuck. Here comes the oil. Oil always floats on the water. But yep, there's a lot of water in there. That's not bad now, the oily now, so go on to the bottom, so it's not full, but it's not good. It's pretty much just oil flowing now. No, probably not as bad as I thought, really, because I was expecting. I was expecting a litre of water that's pretty clean oil now so there's just eh, maybe a quarter a cup of oil at the of water at the bottom of the um, at the bottom of the <coughs> sump and then the rest is fairly clean oil so hopefully things inside aren't as bad as I'm expecting madness madness they call it madness So the head's off, it came off without too much of a um, battle, we had to put a little bit of uh, heat from the blowtorch onto it just to just to heat up where the steel went through the aluminium, but all in all they came out um, pretty good. There's a bit of rust in there, we've got some very rusty valves and some stuck uh, pistons, so I think the, uh, and we've got some blocked, Ugh, very very corroded block cooling ports so all that has to be cleaned out all these valves have to come out probably gonna have to be replaced these valves but the, if the if I can get the pistons out might get away without boring it but I think the cylinder head this is the underside of the cylinder head is gonna need to go to the machine shop to be uh, checked that it hasn't warped and to be properly cleaned and and tested to make sure there's no uh, no leaks between cavities in there. Um, but all in all, it's not as bad as I was expecting. Here's where the head gaskets leaked. It's leaked between these two. That's just a corroded mess. That's that's like that's like Swiss cheese. 
that's all gonna have to be repaired so the cylinder head's definitely got to go to the machining shop um, let's hope we can salvage this so what we'll do is we'll clean this up a bit we'll soak some rust um, penetrating chemical in there that eats rust we'll soak those in here and along here and see and then uh, tomorrow we'll turn the engine upside down disconnect the con rods and see if we can get these pistons to move get them out and then we'll see what the bore condition is okay we've skipped ahead a fair way here I had problems with my camera so I um, haven't filmed at all over the last week um, but what I've done is uh, stripped the motor down. As you can see, it's been cleaned up, repainted. Um, the water pump has been off and um, checked out, put back together. Uh, the timing gear I've checked through and uh, made all new gaskets for and put back. That's all, all looks pretty good. Um, the timing chain's good. Now, the pistons actually, although they look so rusty, it's actually all cleaned up pretty good. The pistons came out okay. They uh, didn't put up any fight at all. One was a little bit, uh, a little bit stiff, but uh, and has some uh, stuck rings on it. But they should, they should come back out okay. And um, the pistons are actually in pretty good shape. I'll show you one in a second. Now the valves were the problem. The valves were where the engine was locked, where they'd been um, in the open position, and the thing had been exposed to moisture in the air and whatever the valves had rusted in so the exhaust valves <clears throat> the ones which are missing there had completely had it they'd all completely rusted up um i actually broke one getting it out and um so they're all being replaced uh inlet valves these three are all okay but this one is no this one's no good either i've lapped him in but he's he's not sitting right slightly bent so he's going to be replaced these ones are going to stay. They're actually very hard to get now for this motor and um, are quite expensive around, even second hand around $45 each. So they're pretty, pretty pricey. Um, so I'm just going to place that one. These others are all, have all lapped in nicely. Um, pistons are all in good shape. Now, now I have all the components in the numbered boxes for each cylinder. So everything goes back together exactly as it came out. The big end bearings uh, had a fair bit of wear on them, so I'm replacing those. The crankshaft has been machined, um, and the big end bearings are 040 um, oversized, so uh, it has had a rebuild at some time. The pistons actually still look great. I mean, there's no there's no side side skirt wear on them. The rings are good, so they'll be going back in pretty much just as is. Um, the other components in there all seem good. The bores, there's no scoring. Uh, there's no ridge. Um, I've honed them. I might give them another just quick light hone before I reassemble and a good clean. At the moment, there's a fairly thick layer of oil and muck I've put on everything just to preserve it. So that's why it doesn't look so great. <clears throat> but anyway, so valves, uh, big end bearings on order from the UK. With the pandemic at the moment, shipping is slow. So they're going to be a few weeks at least before I get those. And I've had to order those from the standard, the Flying Standard Motor Club in the UK. They still have parts for these engines. Um, and they, uh, they're manned by volunteers. So, you know, it's going to take some time for them to process them. But those guys over there should be able to, to help us out with the parts. The biggest problem that we've had is the cylinder head. Or that I've had, I should say. <clears throat> this corrosion is terminal this cylinder head i mean a, a machine shop could repair it but i don't think it's it, it would be financially viable you probably can't really see in there you might just be able to but where the spark plug port is there it is rusted right through into the cooling jacket and rusted right through so this is just a massive swiss cheese inside um the cost of repairing this would just be would be huge. If I actually had to, well, we'd have to work something out. But luckily enough, I had a little look on Gumtree, which is our local sort of online marketplace, and I found a standard 14 block with cylinder head, 
available um, not too far drive from here so <laughs> the odds of that are pretty slim so anyway the head is good it's got a little bit of rust in it and it's currently at the machine shop being skimmed and uh, having a little bit of welding done but it's nothing like that one it's 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 brilliant so i've taken the studs out of that one and put them in this engine the main head studs because they're all good and this was missing all its studs somebody had made their own bolts for it which wasn't such a great idea um i'm working my way through each component now and um refurbishing it getting it ready to go back on so soon i'll be starting work on the generator just checking that through making sure its brushes are okay the starter um i've got to weld up the sump because the sump has got a nasty crack in it um which is above the oil line but is letting would obviously let water in um i have uh, done the manifold and the carburetor has had an overhaul kit put through it so these are some of the things i haven't filmed so sorry about that but uh we've got that through so we will continue now um a bit annoying we have to wait for parts but we do we're going to get on with the generator and the other things i mentioned and then we're going to actually go out to the forklift and rub that back repaint it grease it oil it do lube it up do everything that needs to be done to that to get that ready for when the engine comes back in so moving on. Just a note on the oil filter on the standard engines, <clears throat> um, they're listed as no longer available and the standard motor club in the UK supplies a kit where you can buy a filter and a adapter to make it fit or you can replace the entire uh, oil pump housing for a spin on, modern spin on type, but it's pretty pricey. I've had a look on the internet <clears throat> and came up with a replacement filter which is the same or as close as I could get to the original. It's pretty much exactly the same. Now the part number for the filter, which will fit these, the standard 14 engines and possibly the earlier standard engines with the Tecalamit um, oil pump housing. And the part number to those filters is HB26230P um, or 26230P. Ryko make one as well. Um, this was six Australian dollars, which is about three English pounds. And it is a uh, paper filter with resin bonded at the top and bottom. So it's pretty it's strong. And it is a, an exact fit and an exact replacement for the original filter for the paper fiddle models. Some of the engines, the standard engines, had a sort of foam uh, filter. I'm not sure if you can swap those with these. But <clears throat> if you also have this, you can swap it. Now, it, the, filter that, the, the seal that comes with the filter won't fit. So you'll need to go on to eBay and buy a suitable or your local parts store and buy a suitable ring um, O-ring that will fit your your filter. It's a, they're a couple of bucks. It's, it's no big deal I can put a number up if people want but it's not not hard to find um, And that's uh, an easy cheap replacement under 10 bucks and I think it'll work fine. So let's fit that <coughs> Put a bit of oil on there Mirroring.
before I begin there.
unfortunately, the casket I brought for the sun was a new old stock casket. <coughs> and upon unpacking it, on its lovely vintage casket box, it just crumbled to dust. So it has rotted there. So to make my own, new replacements are no longer available. So you just make them. <clears throat> Actually, it's not that hard to make your own caskets. Okay, we're still waiting on parts for the engine, we're still waiting on um, the exhaust valves and the inlet valve to come from the UK. When then when those arrive, the cylinder head should be here today, back from the machine shop, and then um, the engine go back in. But before we put the engine in, we need to drain the oil and uh, from the gearbox and the steering and refill, and we're going to the UK to grease points throughout the forklift there's uh, about a hundred of them so we'll probably use a couple of tubes of greases all in the in the uh, mast um, pretty much everywhere all the linkages and down there and all the suspension pins so we'll get all those greased today so first job is to jack her up we're going to jack up the front put on blocks of wood so I can try and get underneath and find some drain plugs so we've opened the gearbox drain plug which is up under the fork there, it's very hard to get to. Um, and all that came out was a few drops of water and a little bit of manky oil. So I'd say the axle seals are gone, but it looks at the oil around the wheels and um, that has leaked the oil out over the years and no one's just topped it up. So it's probably just leaked through leaking seals in the casing and that. But the, uh, I've turned the wheels and the shaft and I can turn the wheels by the input shaft so I think the gearbox is okay. We have put um, about three litres of clean engine oil into the gearbox and turned it over a few times just to flush it, to flush some of the muck out. And then I'll drain that out again and then fill it with the correct SA140 weight gear oil. Um, and then it should be the gearbox hopefully.
today's job is going to be to repair the forklift steering wheel. It's just a cast aluminium cross. The original ring has rusted away. So I have stolen my daughter's basketball hoop. She hasn't noticed yet, but if she does, I'll buy her a new one. Um, it's almost the right size, so I've just got to cut all the brackets off of it and hand grips and um, brackets and and hoops, hoop holders I mean, which I will turn into hand grips. Okay, here's the basketball hoop, which is now the steering wheel. I've welded what's left of the um, original steel ring onto the, the basketball hoop. Uh, this is cast aluminium, so I couldn't weld that. And then to give it a bit of extra strength, I've used a bit of JB weld on each of the corners. So it's ready for some paint. I think it looks pretty good. And when it's painted, it'll, it'll do fine. And there it is, still needs a couple of coats of paint. I'm quite happy with that. It's come up really well. <laughs> 